Hello everyone, welcome to this series questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have a question number six that is based on lecture number two. The question of today is what are the advantages and disadvantages of using arithmetic burn in motion or geometric burn in motion for modeling a stock process? Um, this question is based on question number two and also resembles the one we have seen already uh, two sessions ago where we discussed whether arithmetic brown in motion can be used for pricing of options. Um, in essence, uh, those two processes, the difference between those two processes uh, is very small. Uh, it's only about uh, uh, effectively whether we are considering an asset that allows us to be negative and positive or we are only focusing on a positive assets like, for example, stocks. So um, today we will focus on uh, uh, on aspects whether uh, a process, when it can be applied, in which scenarios, to what type of derivatives. So let us consider a case where we have an exotic derivative that we would like to price. This exotic derivative is rather involved. For example, it involves some kind of callability feature. And now uh, we will analyze what type of features we should look at uh, to judge whether arithmetic burn motion or geometric burn motion in particular is adequate for pricing of that derivative. So we have an exotic derivative and we need to price it. Uh, first question we can ask ourselves, uh, is this market for exotic derivatives in this asset class rich? Can we find other exotic derivatives? If we can, then of course this suggests that we should consider a model that also allows us to calibrate uh, to the uh, other market prices and then we can kind of extrapolate this price to the uh, derivative of interest. Uh, if this market is not rich, this means that we price exotic derivative, however there are no more exotic derivatives available that we could use for calibration, then we should move to the next step where we ask ourselves or we have to check whether there are uh, options available for this market. If we have option market, uh, this suggests that first we should use those option markets, so typically those will be liquid instruments. This means that we should consider models that allow us to calibrate uh, the model parameters to these option prices. And then based on that step, if we calibrate model to option prices, then we can price our exotic derivative. Uh, so first step, if there are options like calls and puts, we should calibrate our model to calls and puts because there are, those are available. And then using those model parameters uh, in this model with the calibrated model parameters, we should uh, price the exotic derivative. If calls and puts, they don't exist, uh, then indeed uh, there is nothing else what you can do. Uh, this In this kind of scenario where there is no market instruments available, so for example some kind of uh, a market where we have no implied volatilities for calls and puts uh, and we want to price some exotic derivative, in that case you may consider indeed that the Black-Scholes model or geometric bar motion is a suitable uh, model for pricing of that derivative because we don't have enough market information. This means that calibration of our sigma, that should be sufficient. Of course, in this case, one could argue that maybe you, we should not even price such exotic derivative if we don't have hedging instruments. This means if we sell exotic derivative, which has multiple, let's say, advanced and complicated features like callability features, then from the hedging perspective, if we are not able to buy underlying calls and put options, so let's basically say the, the building blocks for this exotic derivative, then likely we should not even trade this derivative. However, from the, let's say, only theoretical um, perspective, we could say, yes, in this scenario, we are allowed to use geometric barrier motion because we don't have enough information. We could just calibrate one parameter sigma to one instrument in the market, and that should be enough. However, if there are more instruments in the market, let's say other exotic derivatives or calls and puts, then pricing uh, of this exotic derivative using a geometry brand motion is definitely not suitable because the model cannot calibrate sufficiently well to implied volatility smile and skew. We have only one free parameter that we have to use. So overall, uh, it is always a choice if we choose a model for pricing. It is very important to to start asking ourselves a question, what is the type of a derivative we wish to price? Uh, 
is this model adequate for that part of derivative? And this what you can uh, we can judge based on a uh, let's say market available instruments. If there are market available instruments, then it's clear models like geometry by motion or simple Black Scholes type of model is not suitable. Uh, otherwise, in a, let's say in extreme scenario we could consider such a model for pricing, but from the theoretical perspective, in the hedging perspective, we should not go for that. So here, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Of course, those two models, um, in particular geometric by motion, we, we, there's insufficient number of degrees of freedom that we should, that we have to calibrate our model to the market instruments. Uh, so those models should not be used for pricing of exotic derivatives. Uh, we still uh, apply those models, especially if we talk about the pricing of, uh, uh, let's say, implied volatilities. When we talk about implied volatilities, we everything relies on geometric Brownian motion. But for pricing of exotic derivatives and more advanced uh, assets, it is definitely not pref not a preferred uh, choice. So here, uh, advantages or disadvantages. Uh, advantages very few because we can only fit the phys physical uh, representation whether market is allows for positive or negative assets but not much more except that we have only one parameter so if the market allows us to calibrate only one parameter that should be enough otherwise it's not i hope it explains um, see you next time bye bye